everyone, it's Lorelai. In the last devlog, we talked about how the party following works, depending on who exactly is the party follower. I forgot to turn off that overlay, but that's not a problem. Uh, in this episode, we're going to go over how exactly we're switching the main character. And by main character, I just mean whoever is uh, being controlled. So let's see how that works. So as we mentioned, Deirdre is the main character first and foremost. So by default, she will have all of the things set to on. So if I go to common actions, uh, we talked about most of these already, but we didn't talk about this one, which is if two is pressed, then do what? I just wrote if two is pressed. <laughs> so this is if left stick up is pressed. And I have it set to... Left stick left is one, left stick up is two, and then right is three and down is four. So if you're using a controller, you switch the main character is based off of the left stick. But if you're on keyboard, you just press some, some numbers. So if two is pressed, that means that we're switching to Nisha. So Nisha is always two, Deirdre is always one, and then the other characters are three and four no matter what. So when two is pressed, we're going to change the main character variable uh, in Runewood Common, in the project common, to two. Because it's not one anymore. Deirdre is not the main character anymore. The playable character, it is now two. Okay? And then we're going to execute this new object action, which is called change to follower. Let's look at that. Change to follower. A few things happening here. First, we are changing the current main self switch to off because she's not the current main anymore. And this switch is what is helping the followers determine their locked target to determine their their locked main character. So we need this off because she's not the main character anymore. Then we are going to be destroying the main character lock. OK, so this guy, it's going away. <laughs> it's gone. It'll come back in, in just a second in like a frame. It'll come back for Nisha, but we need to remove it first. And then what we're doing is we are turning off that main lock loop uh, so that when this is off, we can make her a main character again. And then we're changing object to Deirdre follower. She's no longer Deirdre playable. This event is morphing, is changing into the follower version. And I just have it set to uh, take over all of the things. Um, I might have to change some of this stuff later, but right now this is what I think I want. I also had to adjust the Y position to a 30 or to 64 pixels just so that she was appearing in the right spot before she was appearing 64 pixels above her, <laughs> which meant that if we were next to a wall and I switched to Nisha, Deirdre would jump up. Her follower would, would spawn up and she would get stuck in the wall. So I made it sure I made sure that she will spawn right at her right at her feet, right where she needs to spawn or change. She's not technically spawning. She's changing. She's changing into Deirdre follower. OK, so that just happened. OK, so Deirdre just changed. What is happening with Nisha? Well, let's look at Nisha follower because Nisha playable is technically not on the screen right now. So Nisha playable isn't doing anything. Nisha follower is uh, for a little bit anyway. So if we go to common actions, we have one that says become main. Become main happens whenever the current main character is two. So it's the same as Deirdre. Hers is one. So she's automatically the main. And it's basically the same exact logic as that previous episode that I talked about as Deirdre's logic. So if current main is two, then we're turning his self switch current main to on. That's going to help the party members find the main character. And then we change the object. So this is different. <laughs> we change object to Nisha playable. And then I've kept all of these things. Except I didn't have to adjust the Y position for this one, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't matter. <laughs> don't question it, I guess. Uh, so now we are Nisha Playable. And Nisha Playable has his own generate lock if main. So this is the same as Deirdre's generate lock if main. We've got if the variable is two, which it is, and if the loop is off, we're going to generate the main character lock underneath as a child. OK, so now this is Nisha's child and we are turning that switch on 
Although I believe we turned it on over here. We're turning it on again. I don't know. I don't know. But we have the switch on and then we have um, the lock loop is on so that this isn't spammed. And now we have Nisha. And Nisha can do all of the things that Deirdre can do, except Nisha is ranged. So I'm going to have to change the attack. Uh, but I'm still I'm still working on that for the follower version. So once once the follower version is done, then I'll put it into the playable version. And then Nisha has a common action if one is pressed. So left stick left is pressed. We're going to do the same exact thing. Uh, but this time the current main character variable is one and we're executing change to follower. And we have the same logic as before, turning off all of the things, destroying all of the things, <laughs> and then changing uh, to Nisha follower. And then Deirdre as a follower will do the same thing. Um, where is that? Become main, right, right, right. So now the variable is one, we're gonna become the main character again. So I'm going to have to copy these and paste them twice for the next two party members and just make sure I have common actions. Uh, if one is pressed, if three is pressed, if four is pressed, and then for Deidre, if uh, three is pressed, if four is pressed, etc. for those four. If I had more than four characters, I think this might get a little unwieldy, a little too much. But because it's only four, it, I think it's totally fine. I think it's totally doable. And I'm doing it all within visual editing, which is great because I can't code. <laughs> I can try to code and I can edit code, uh, but I can't manifest code. I can't create code. So this is working. And I'm very happy with it. Fingers crossed the rest of the party members aren't as much of a headache. <laughs> uh, I suspect editing all of the characters. If I edit one, I'm going to have to edit all of them. Uh, that might get really annoying. So hopefully I get these these followers down um, and as refined as I can before I add the other ones. But that's why I'm working on all of this now. I just want to get some of the systems in place now so that when I am farther in the game, I don't have to go back and redo way too many things, you know. So if I can get all of the attacks working now, then I can copy and paste for more playable characters and more followers without having to redo too much. You know what I mean? All right. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. I think that's the devlog. Um I'll just show you guys again how that works. So Deirdre has summoned her main character lock and Nisha is technically looking for this lock. And then I switch over by pressing two. And again, Deirdre's overlay is showing that's her uh, field of vision for looking for Nisha, I believe. Not too complicated once I explain it, but uh, getting it to work the first time <laughs> was was a bit of a bit of a triumph. Yay. All right. Uh, that's all. I hope you're enjoying the series and I can't wait to show you more of my game. I can't wait to actually do more of my game. Right now I'm working on this attacking stuff and maybe maybe I'll go over it or maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. Bye.